The need to make businesses environmentally sustainable and clean has got companies revamping their strategies and one such player is in the cement space and that's Dalmia Cement who has aimed to go carbon negative in the next 30 years. Managing Director and CEO of the company Mahendra Singh talked to Nikki Merchandani about going green and clean in the cement business. Listen in. Uh, our company's philosophy is clean and green is profitable and sustainable and with this implementation of the philosophy we have seen that one we have become the lowest carbon footprint cement company in global cement world second we have seen that it adds value to the organization by having better profitability and we are one of the most profitable cement company in India third it gives pride and happiness to our all stakeholders and fourthly uh, it has also given us uh, rank number one by CDP which is a enrollment uh, data collecting organization uh, world over and they have identified Dalmia Cement as number one company in terms of low carbon economy transition on global front. So having understood the vast benefits which the reduction of uh, emissions gives us, uh, we try to imagine what next can be given and the thought which came to us is that uh, let us not be only carbon neutral by 2040 but let us make all efforts to become carbon negative by 2040. Many of our viewers might be knowing that this is the only company, not only the cement company, but the only company in the world who have committed for carbon negative. And the reason being is that we consider ourselves as parents of future, we consider ourselves as a caretaker of our all stakeholders, including global stakeholders. Thirdly, the reduction in carbon uh, emissions, reduction in CO2 emissions would also add to the profitability. And uh, we have now made very few specific steps uh, which would help us to become carbon negative by 2040. And if I highlight that, then one, we will be using 100% renewable energy by 2030. And renewable energy can be solar power, can be waste heat recovery power, can be power to be generated from biomass. And this will be replacing fossil fuel power. Secondly, we have also decided and we have already implemented to some extent is to use biomass, to use bamboos and to use plastic waste and other waste of other sectors so that we can replace 100% fossil fuel by 2035. Third and major step is to capture CO2 and use it for other beneficial purposes. Now the third one which is CO2 capture utilization which we call CCU. Uh, it's uh, a challenge for us because it's a new technology which has to be implemented on a plant level. And let me share with you that today it's a proud moment for us when we have signed Memorandum of Understanding with Carbon Clean Solutions of UK to set up a plant of 5 lakh ton CO2 capture and utilization. Now it would be uh, done in process by first uh, study and then implementation. But I am quite hopeful, our organization is quite hopeful that with this implementation of plant, it will uh, throw uh, a big, big uh, challenge to not us only, for others also to embrace this technology. And this technology you would find would uh, solve the problem of not only cement sector but it will solve problem of power, aluminium, steel, oil and gas and many other sectors. So we are quite happy today that we have been able to sign MOU and we are now feeling quite confident that by 2040 or before we would be carbon negative. That's a great initiative, sir. Shifting back focus to a little polluting uh, company, in that case, Petco Prices. Uh, I mean, they've been correcting 25% from a year now. Uh, how much do you expect Petco Prices to be lower in Q2 as compared to Q1? Uh, it, it, it can be uh, 2 to 4% uh, lower than Q1. 
but uh, important is that yes uh, we do use uh, alternate fuel also we use coal also and now we use uh, pet coke also so whichever fuel is economical for us we do use it but then, uh, you know, if a little bit more about the cost efficiencies, because, uh, you know, we've been speaking about how we're planning to be more efficient. Even yes. uh, recent developments suggested that Indian ra railways have deferred their busy season surcharge on freight. Uh, does this come as a booster for the cement uh, industry yes. as a whole, given that freight cost is a 25 to 30 percent of the cement making cost? How does that, uh, you know, help your company financials for that matter? Yes, uh, you know, uh, the deferring of uh, uh, ex uh, peak season fuel, uh, peak season surcharge would definitely help. Uh, in our case, uh, we do transport uh, cement by uh, rail also, so then, uh, and we do uh, transport our uh, raw material or fuel also. So I think it will be of great help and uh, definitely it will add to our profitability and that too in uh, this tough economic time. How much margin efficiency do you expect or cost savings in terms of margins if you can quantify those gains for us that we can see in uh, quarter three given that we are past the quarter two right now? Yes, uh, you know, we are trying to assess that yes, exactly what the impact would be you know, from quantum point of view and maybe next time when we discuss we can definitely share those numbers. Sure. Uh, a little broader perspective from you, sir. I just wanted to understand there have been few uh, you know, brokerage reports for that matter. In Credit Suisse suggested that the underlying drivers of cement demand have been losing momentum. For instance, we've been seeing rural uh, income growth, which has been weakening. There's been slowing in trust spend. There's been correcting inventory in urban housing segment. Uh, w what's your perception on that? And how much do you conquer with this view? Yes, uh, you are right that yes, one, rural economy has slowed down, second, in uh, totality also, uh, like uh, first quarter's GDP growth has been only 5% against expectations of maybe 7.5% and third, uh, still uh, that slowdown is continuing on account of which uh, even cement de demand has not grown which we expected uh, would be around 6 to 8%. So based on that, uh, the sentiments of uh, new house builder is low. Based on that, even the real estate is not doing great. But the interventions which government of India, our finance minister is making to boost up the economy by giving some boosters to some real estate or affordable housing, some uh, booster to infrastructure. And what we hear is that the NHI and the Gadkariji would be coming out with the new contract of 3 lakh crore for road construction. So that may augur well, but at, the, uh, at this time, uh, things are not looking great for uh, overall uh, economy and GDP. And so to say also for the cement companies as a whole. Yes, yes, yes. Also, the company we are part uh, so, of the big Indian economy. Sure, sure. I get the point. Uh, so the company uh, in the period of the slowdown is planning to increase the capacity by 40% to 37 MTPA uh, from 26.5 presently. How much of that has been achieved? And given the kind of slowdown that you're talking about, uh, are the plans still on track? First, I would say plan is on track. Second, these are all short-term hiccups and we look at mid and long-term uh, strategies and long-term planning. So we don't get deterred by few months or one years uh, here and there slow down or uh, uh, fast ramp up. We are quite hopeful and quite buoyant about uh, overall Indian economy and that's why we are going ahead with our uh, expansion mode. Sure, and how about the pricing power? How has that been behaving uh, for the eastern region as a whole? Prices, uh, I may not be able to comment much except that, yes, uh, it's uh, all uh, depending on demand and supply situation. 
and uh, maybe since now uh, up monsoon is getting over and uh, demand period would come, so it may improve.